Dead Cells is a much larger game than one would expect. There are a lot of biomes in this game that has unique properties that distinguish itself from any other. And a question that I get asked a lot is, how do you know which biomes to go to in every single run? How do you optimize your builds to suit each individual biome? And today will finally be the day where I do the biome slash routing guide for Dead Cells. Sit down, grab some snacks, get comfortable, because this is going to be a long one. So how this guide is going to work is that I'm going to split this video into four sections, because I think that there are four major decisions that you have to make in every single run that dictates the outcome of your experience. So the first section is the early game. So this decision refers to the choice of biomes that you select in the very first biome, so in the prisoner's quarters. In this case, there are only three. Next up is the mid-game decision. This choice dictates which first boss that you will fight. You make this choice at the end of Prison Depths or Corrupted Prison. The third decision is the late game. This is the choice of biomes that you take after you beat the first boss. So not only will this dictate the next two biomes that you will go through in your run, it will also dictate which second boss that you will fight. And finally, the end game. This one's probably the easiest of them all. This is the choice that you make after fighting the second boss. So should you go to High Peak Castle or should you go to Derelict Distillery? Or if you fought the giant, should you just skip High Peak Castle altogether? Now you might be thinking, why would you want to actually go through the biomes instead of skipping it? Well, I will get into that once I get into the section. After each section, I'm also going to post example builds that I have, and I will test your knowledge on which biome to take that's best suited for the build that I will display. I will also cover some 3-4 BC stuff. This mostly includes scroll fragments. However, I will not be introducing 5 BC content, which is like extra biomes at the end of the game. And a disclaimer is that nothing I say in this guide guide is like definitively correct. You are obviously like allowed to pick whichever biomes you want. This is just like from my two years of experience of playing the game. So so what I have here is a map, the interactive map from the wiki page. Well, first of all, it wasn't in very high definition. I tried to upscale it as much as I can. So this was the best I could do. I'm going to kind of first show like how you're supposed to read this thing. Basically, all maps, as you see, has a base 10% chance of spawning a curse chest. If it says 110, that means there is a guaranteed curse chest on that biome and a 10% chance for a second one spawn. And not all of the maps have food shops. So let's start off with the early game section. So every single run starts out in the prisoner's quarters. There are always two scrolls here and an only 1% chance for a curse chest. You should always get the two scrolls and try to go for the 30 kill doors. I recommend that you do not buy from shops here because you're just wasting your money. Your first choices at this point are promenade, sewers, and arboretum. This choice, I think, depends on purely the type of build that you have in the prisoner's quarters. So let's go through them one by one. Promenade of the Condemned is actually my least favorite biome in the entire game. Why? Because you have to deal with these things. The protectors that protect other monsters nearby are actually extremely annoying to deal with, especially at 4 plus BC. Because with the recent malaise change, if an enemy is transforming into an elite, you have to go and kill the protector and then come back to kill the original enemy. Then you'll probably lure a bunch of other monsters to your location. So this is actually like my, in my opinion, the hardest biome like in this level. So I would say that overall, I think you should go to the promenade if you are undecided on your build. If, you, if your build doesn't really have any identity, and this is because in the promenade, there are a variety of like hazards. So there are spike traps, and there are like flying enemies as well as like grounded enemies. It's basically just like a well-rounded biome to go through. But honestly, I would say generally try to stay away from Promenade. Toxic Sewers. Um, now I'm sure as many people are aware, Toxic Sewers, you have to deal with buzz cutters, so the flying enemies. You have to deal with enemies borrowing out of the ground. Your weapon needs to have crowd control and it needs to be good in tight corridors. So do you have access to burst damage? Can you deal with flying enemies effectively? If you have something like the torch or warpan, it will suffer quite a bit in this biome. Any bow without piercing shots doesn't work well, unless you have a way to compensate for it, such as Lacerating Aura. On 3-4 BC, it's in your best interest to default to the Toxic Sewers because they give one additional scroll fragment compared to the other two biomes. And finally, we have Arboretum. This biome is basically like the stark contrast of Toxic Sewers. There's a lot of open space, high emphasis on mobility. You will excel here if you have a ranged setup, although there are some exceptions. You do have to deal with thornies, so again, if you hit them in the back, 
you will take damage. This is not the case if you have a ranged setup though, and you don't need crowd control to make it through this biome. Any type of bow, I would say, is well suited for this biome. So just think of this as like the direct opposite of Toxic Sewers. Um, you don't need like, there aren't gonna be enemies coming out of the ground. There aren't gonna be like flying enemies. Well, there are, but it's like not as much. You still have to deal with buzz cutters, though they're, they're less annoying to deal with here because they're a lot more open space. So again, Arboretum, try to come here if you have a ranged setup. And the major takeaway from the early game decision is that if you go to the toxic sewers, you can never fight Mama Tick. So that's something you gotta be aware of. Okay, so let's move on to some early game questions. So here I'm going to list a couple of builds that I just had when I recorded footage for this video. So here I have a survival build with the explosive crossbow. So at this point, let's pretend you are at the end of the prisoner's quarters. So which one of these three biomes should I go to to make the most use out of this build? I'm going to have a timer at the bottom of the screen to tell you how much time is left before I reveal the answer. Obviously, there are no definitive answers in this, so honestly, you can pick whichever one you want. The information that I give is personally from my knowledge of the game. If you need more time to decide before the timer runs out, just pause the video and you can take as much as you want. So let's try this out. So I think this build personally is suited for Dilapidated Arboretum because of its ranged setup. It deals with Thornies effectively, and because of the open space, you can take advantage of the explosive shots. You can deal with flying enemies effectively, especially if they're long range, and Teleric Shock is good for crowd control. Okay, next up is the Brutality build with the Torch. So this time around, make sure to pay attention to the affixes of each and every item. So again, when the timer runs out, I'm going to reveal the answer. So I think in this build, I would say either Promenade or Toxic Sewers could work. Now I did say that when I was talking about the Toxic Sewers, that you have to deal with flying enemies and the torch doesn't really do that. However, I do have a really cool knife dance here, which has burst damage and it can get you out of a tricky situation. So because I have the appropriate support, should I run into problems in the Toxic Sewers? I think I could like go to the Toxic Sewers for this one. And obviously my intention for this build is definitely not Fire Mama Tick because I have a fire based synergy. And finally for the early quizzes, here I have a Brutality build once again with the Spartan Sandals and Frontline Shield. So I think in this case, I would personally would have went to the Promenade. Both Heavy Turret as well as Light Speed don't really give you like enough crowd control, and they don't deal enough like burst damage. In terms of Spartan Sandals, I think like if you go to the Arboretum, there are a lot of open space and you can't really take advantage of like Spartan Sandals crit condition, which is if the target lands against the wall. So in this case, I would say Promenade is like, because you're still undecided, this build still lacks identity. I would say Promenade is the best choice here. Alright, let's move on to the mid game. There are two optional biomes in Dead Cells. They are the Prison Depths and the Corrupted Prison. If you went to the Toxic Sewers, you will go to Corrupted Prison. If you went to Promenade or Arboretum, you go to Prison Depths. These biomes are technically optional, though I would highly recommend that you come here every single run, because you get an additional scroll stat along with the curse chest in the beginning of these biomes. You get an additional shop, you get more resources in the form of gold and cells, and you might even find an additional challenge rift. So at the end of these two biomes will be the next biome that you have to choose, and this choice will dictate the first boss that you will fight. So let's go through all the bosses first. On 3 to 4 BC, it's in your best interest to default to Conjunctivius because she gives you the most scroll fragments. So as you can see here, Concierge gives you 3, Mama Tick gives you 4, Conjunctivius gives you 5. I would generally try to avoid Concierge if you can help it. Uh, you don't get a lot of rewards and honestly the fight isn't very interesting. You will honestly want to fight Concierge if like you're, you don't have an identity for your build yet or it's just like a necessity. Obviously there are going to be exceptions. For example, Assassin's Dagger. Deal critical hits if you hit behind an enemy. The thing is though, Conjunctivius doesn't have a frontside or a backside. Mama Tick doesn't have a backside either. 
she's always propped up against the wall. So if you have Assassin's Dagger, it makes sense that like you will want to fight Concierge. So you kind of have to like always think outside the box sometimes. Next up is Mama Tick. The main takeaway in this fight is that the arena is covered in water. This can work against you or for you. Obviously, any type of fire build is terrible because it just doesn't work. If you have electric synergy or ice shards, they work great here because they will always inflict critical hits. It's important that you make this choice before you go to the Morass of the Banished because that is the only biome that has access to Mama Tick. And I would say both the melee or range setup works here. Though sometimes, again, you do have to think outside the box. So for example, Vorpan works well in this fight, however, Assassin's Dagger does not. And last up is Conjunctivius. She is probably the hardest of the three bosses. However, she gives you the most rewards out of the three. So any type of range setup, or if you have a really sticky build, if you can manage to stay in the air for a very long time, if you can deal consistent DPS, even though Conjunctivius is moving all over the place, any slow build will not work very well here because you will probably never get a chance to hit Conjunctivius. So there is a attack by this boss called Bullet Hell. Basically, it's where Conjunctivius goes to the top of the screen and just fires like this rain of lasers down on you. If she ever does this attack, that means you've messed something up because most of the times you should not see this phase unless you've been in this fight for a very long time, which should not happen. So let's go back to Corrupted Prison and Prison Depths. If you went to the Corrupted Prison, your next choices are Ramparts or Ancient Sewers. So basically your choices are Concierge or Conjunctivius, like I said before. If you went to Toxic Sewers, you can never fight Mama Tick. If you went to Prison Depths, you have a lot more freedom. So your next choices are Morass of the Banished, Ossuary, and Ancient Sewers. So you have access to all three. So let's go through the next biomes then. One thing to keep in mind as you go through these four biomes is that by this point, your build should start to have identity. Um, you shouldn't have like items that are like off color. Uh, maybe you, you still need like upgrades for one or two items. I think that's fine. But basically at this point, all of your items should align with your color. So first of all, something I should note is that all of these biomes except for ancient sewers have a guaranteed food shop. So Ancient Sewers does not have one, however, as a trade-off, it gives you the most amount of scroll fragments as well as the highest tier in the shop. So let's start off with the easiest, Ramparts. Now I would actually say avoid Ramparts because there aren't a lot of enemies here so the rewards aren't too great. You get less chance to get the 60 kill door and there is no curse chest. However, on 3BC+, plus, there is a door in this biome that also leads to Conjunctivius, so you get a little bit more freedom in your runs. But honestly, Ramparts is just a bad biome. I would say try to avoid it if possible. Next up is the Ossuary. This biome leads to Concierge, only it's very large, so think like the Labitator Arboretum but on steroids. I would say try to avoid this biome as well because while well, you have to fight Concierge, which is kind of boring, there is a guaranteed curse chest as well as a food shop here. And honestly, the curse chest is pretty easy to lift as long as you have some way to deal with thornies. So you still need like, I would say you still need crowd control in this biome to really make it through. But honestly, I would say avoid this biome too if possible. Next up is Morass of the Banished. There are a lot of small squishy enemies here, and this is the only way to reach Mama Tick. Um, keep in mind that you have to fight two giant like tick monsters in this biome, one from the beginning and one in the middle. There is a guaranteed curse chest, there is a food shop, but I would say you should come here if your intention is to find Mama Tick. In terms of rewards, Morass of the Banish is okay compared to the other biomes, so I won't really like dock points for that. I would say the curse here is pretty easy to lift because there are a lot of like small enemies. Finally is Ancient Sewers. Again, like I said, it has the highest tier shop on 3 to 4 BC. It gives you the most amount of fragments. So as you can see for Ramparts, it only gives you two, but on Ancient Sewers, it gives you five. That's almost one additional scroll stat, so that is a very big difference if you ask me. There is no curse chest here or a food shop, and on top of that, Ancient Sewers leads to Conjunctivius only. But I would say if you're up for the challenge, you should try to come here. Okay, so let's move on to some mid-game stuff. So here is a Brutality build with the Frantic Sword. Let's pretend that I've just gone through Corrupted Prison, so my next two choices are Ramparts or Ancient Sewers. I would say that like this build would definitely be able to handle Conjunctivius because we got the bleeding synergy with open wounds 
and we have Grappling Hook, which can kind of work against Conjunctivius. It doesn't work all of the time, but honestly, I think this build can handle Conjunctivius. And obviously, like I said before, just try to avoid Concierge, because the fight isn't very interesting and you don't get as many rewards. Okay, here is a Rhythm and Bazooki build on Survival. Let's assume that we've just gone through Prison Depths. Our next choices are Ossuary, Ancient Sewers, or Morass of the Banished. So because of the Owl of War, we can kind of go with Morass of the Banished or Ancient Sewers. I think both Mamatic or Conjunctivius can work with this build because like the Rhythm of Bazooki just has a really massive range and like it can basically hit Conjunctivius if you're like stand in the middle of the arena. In terms of range, this is actually pretty good. So I would say both Morass of the Banished or Ancient Sewers are okay with this. Alright, finally we have another survival build, this time featuring the Iron Staff. Again, we are at the end of Prison Depths, so our next biomes are also Ari, Morass of the Banished, and Ancient Sewers. So in this case, I would say the Iron Staff is not strong enough to kill Conjunctivius before she does the bullet hell attack. We do have some nice turrets, though those will probably have to get replaced sometime in the next biome. We have Punishment, which is a surprisingly good shield. So I would say because of like, because Mama Tick does a lot of melee attacks against you, there is actually quite a lot of opportunities to pull off the critical hits with the Iron Staff. So in this case, I would say Mama Tick is correct. Okay, next up is the late game decision. So this comes after fighting the first boss. After the boss, there are two biomes you have to go through and then you fight the second boss. So this choice will dictate the next two biomes that you will go to as well as the second boss you will fight. However, let me just say that in this portion of the game, there is a lot more freedom than before. So at this point, after you fight the first boss, I want you to just stop, look at your inventory and look at your build and think to yourself, can this build beat Giant? Can this build beat Timekeeper? Can this build beat Scarecrow? Because this late game choice is solely dependent on which second boss you're trying to fight. Just So just think of like these biomes as like your means of actually getting to the boss. I know the map itself looks a bit daunting here, but honestly, it's not that bad. Is your build too slow? Is it not good enough? Does the synergy not work with any boss? Because at this point, you should have strong identity in your build. So at this point, after you beat the first boss, just look at your build and say, okay, I want to fight Giant. I want to fight Timekeeper. And basically, you would look at your routes and you look at the options. And this is how you pick your route for the remainder of the run. So the routes are really just an afterthought. Your goal here in the late game decision is to figure out which boss you're trying to fight. So it doesn't matter that like what boss you fought. So Concierge, Conjunctivius, or Mama Tick, no matter which boss you fought, you can route to any of the second bosses as long as you route correctly. So a lot more freedom has been brought into the game, which I really like. So I think you should definitely try to default to the giant, even if you're playing at 2 BC, because first of all, you get to skip High Peak Castle, which you get a bit more freedom, and it like it makes sense lore-wise why the giant would have like a personal secret passageway to the king. If you're playing on 3 BC and above, giant gives you the most scroll fragments so Giant gives you 4, both a Timekeeper and Scarecrow give you 3 each. So how I would like to imagine these 3 bosses is that I would like to imagine that they're playing different like colors against you. So Giant is basically playing a survival build against you. His attacks are slow but they hit hard. If you come to the Giant, it's okay to come to the Giant without a shield and if you don't have like a very fast build. Because if you have like the broadsword, the broadsword can actually work in here because you actually can pull off the entire combo once the eyeball comes out. You need to have airtime in order to deal with the fists effectively. If you come here with like symmetrical lance, you will suffer a lot in this fight because you don't get enough airtime with the symmetrical lance to actually like hit the fists. And on top of that, I should mention that the giant cannot be rooted, slowed down, or frozen. Any build that has like these synergies will not work, so such as Nutcracker and Repeater Crossbow. And sometimes you have to think outside the box. So when the eyeball comes out, if you have like Vorpan as well as Assassin's Dagger, then they can't do critical hits because the eyeball doesn't have a front side or a back side. Timekeeper is, in my opinion, the most rounded boss out of these three. I like to imagine that she's playing a brutality build against you. She has both ranged attacks as well as melee attacks. 
And honestly, once you get used to it, it's really not that bad. In fact, I would say that all these three bosses are around the same difficulty level. It all depends on your build. Timekeeper is easier with a shield. She seems scary at first, but honestly, you will get used to it. And it's probably the most balanced boss out of these three. And finally, we have Scarecrow. Scarecrow is the newly added boss from Fatal Falls. Um, honestly, Scarecrow is probably the most squishiest out of these three bosses. She has the least amount of health, because most of the time, my fights only last around like 30 seconds. She attacks you relentlessly with the melee weapons, but honestly, if you have a shield, you can. it's basically a free win. I would say do not come to Scarecrow if you have like a melee exclusive build without a shield. So if you have a range setup that deals high DPS, such as with double turrets, when you're playing tactics, you can easily melt through Scarecrow in like 30 seconds. So the next set of biomes, if I were to rank these biomes from the easiest to hardest, I would say still village easiest, followed by fractured shrines, followed by graveyard, and then the hardest is slumbering sanctuary. So let's go through them. Still village, again, this is one of those biomes I would say just try to avoid. It's a pretty small biome, so you don't get a lot of rewards here compared to the other ones. There is a food shop, but there is no curse chest. Stoke Village leads to Clock Tower, Forgotten Sepulcher, or the Undying Shores, so effectively it leads to all three bosses. Next up is the Fractured Shrine. This is the new biome added by the Fatal Falls DLC. It has a guaranteed curse chest, a food shop, as well as a vault with three legendary items. Now at this version of the game, this biome is still pretty buggy. Um, as you can see, every single biome in this level give you four scroll stats. So if you look at Still Village, gives you four. Slumbering Sanctuary gives you three and one from the curse chest, so four as well. If you look at Graveyard, three from the level and one from the curse chest, four again. However, if you look at Fractured Shrines, it gives you two and then one from the curse chest, which is only three. So you actually get one less scroll stat if you go to the Fractured Shrine. But I think this is just like a bug for the devs part, and they just need to fix it, so. In the meantime, I would say just avoid Fractured Shrines, because it puts you at a massive disadvantage if you come here. Fractured Shrines leads to Undying Shores, Clock Tower, and Forgotten Subacore, so same as Steel Village, it leads to all three bosses. Next up, the Graveyard. So I think the Graveyard is probably most people's favorite biome to go through, like at this level of the game. It's just like a well-rounded biome in general. There is a curse chest, a food shop, and it leads to all three bosses. This is my personal default route, so most of the times I will try to go to Graveyard if I can. The curse is like easier to lift here because there are a lot of like rats and bats flying around, so a lot of small squishy enemies. Graveyard leads to caverns, Undying Shores and Forgotten Sepulchre, so again, all three bosses. And finally, we have Slumbering Sanctuary. This is, in my opinion, the hardest biome out of these four. It has a guaranteed curse chest, but it does not have a food shop, so unlike the other three, Slumbering Sanctuary is the only biome that does not contain a food shop at this level of the game. However, Slumbering will give you the most amount of scroll fragments, if you're playing on 3 BC and up. And the curse chest here, in my opinion, is probably one of the hardest ones to lift in the game because all of the enemies here are like medium sized. So you don't really have a lot of like free kills and you have to deal with golems. Slumbering Sanctuary leads to Cavern, Forgotten Sepulchre and Clock Tower. So again, all three bosses are available. So next up, we'll go through the biomes in the next portion of this game. Again, there are four. So let's go through them one by one. First of all, we have Clock Tower. Clock Tower leads to Timekeeper only, and I would say avoid this biome if possible, just like the other ones. But honestly, like, it's not that bad. Um, it's not as bad as, like, Still Village or Ramparts. If you're set on fighting Timekeeper, I would say you, like, can come here. Like, it's not as bad as the other ones. Next up, Forgotten Subwoofer. This is the only biome out of these four that contain a guaranteed curse chest. It comes pretty early in the level, so that's good. Um, I would say you definitely need a fast build because you need to move from place to place. If you stay in the darkness for too long, you will start to take damage and eventually die. But honestly, if you have like a high DPS build, you will excel at this biome because you will just melt through everything. Forgotten Sepulchre leads to Timekeeper as well as Giant. Next up is the Undying Shores. Now this is one of the most interesting biomes that I think that are in the game right now. So this was introduced in the Fatal Falls expansion. Um, what's really weird about the Undying Shores is that the enemy variety in this biome solely depends on your run so far. So if you fought like, if you went to the Labitator Arboretum, 
If you go to the Undying Shores, you will see Mushroom Boys and Blow Gunners. If you want to Ossuary, you will see Corpse Juices and like those giant vats. If you want to corrupt a prison, you will start to see slammers here, which is probably not a good sign. Really interesting concept, and I think like in terms of lore-wise, it makes sense that it's like that. Undying Shores leads to Scarecrow only, however, just keep in mind, in this version of the game, this biome is still bugged. You get one less scroll stat if you come here compared to the other biomes, so... I would say until this is fixed, try to avoid this biome. And finally, we have Caverns. Now, Caverns in my opinion, is probably the most dangerous biome out of these four. You have to deal with ground shakers, you have to deal with flying enemies, the demons, you have to deal with arbiters, the ones that shoot projectiles at you, and when they die, they will like drop projectiles of their own. You have to deal with a variety of enemies in this biome. However, the rewards that you can get here are absolutely massive. First of all, you get the most scroll fragments out of the other biomes here. And second, the item tier in the shops here is the highest in the entire game. So if you look at like the symbol here, you see how like the caverns has a seventh tier compared to the, like the other ones. So the caverns, if you're playing on 4-5 BC, gives you weapons in the 12th tier, which is the highest available in the entire game. It's even higher than High Peak Castle, which which comes one biome afterwards. The only other biome that has the same tier of items as Caverns is the Astrolab, which is exclusive to 5 BC. Cavern leads to Scarecrow and Giant. Okay, so here are some quizzes for the late game choice. So first of all, here is a tactics build with a quick bow. Let's assume that I just fought Conjunctivius, so my next choices of biomes are Graveyard and slumbering sanctuary so keep in mind with this choice i also have to pick which second boss i'm going to fight so try to pay attention to which second boss is this build best suited for So if you want my personal opinion, I actually think all three second bosses are okay. So I see the parry shield will probably have to get replaced because the parry shield isn't very good. But we do have some extremely high quality items, both flamethrower turret as well as with denial. All like I would say S tier items in general. I would say that I will probably, because this build is just extremely powerful, I probably would have went to slumbering sanctuary, then to caverns to fight giant since I think this can definitely kill Giant really easily. I mean, it's a tactics build, obviously it's powerful enough. So next up is a survival build, this time with Ice Shards and Giant Killer. We have some nice slowdown synergy with the Frostbite mutation as well as Armadillo Pack, so we also have a shield inside our backpack. And this time around, we just finished fighting Mama Tick, so our next choices of biomes are Still Village, Fractured Shrines, and Graveyard. So because of the high DPS of this build, I would say this can actually fight Giant. As for routing, I probably would have went to Graveyard, then Caverns, and then fight Giant. So because I can see this build working out against Giant, I would definitely try to go there. Giant Killer, because we have the support from Ice Shards, because of its slow attack speed, we can kind of compensate it with Ice Shards. So let's move on to the final question for the late game quiz. This time around, we have a Tactics build with Pyrotechnics and the Boomerang. So let's assume this time around, we just finished fighting Conjunctivius again. So our next choices of biomes are Slumbering Sanctuary and Graveyard. So again, because this is a tactics build, I would say that we can just melt through everything because we have Owl of War as well as Oil Grenade. We have a bunch of like really nice oil synergy with fire. So in this case, because we have running tactics, there is very little margin for error. So I probably would have went to Graveyard, followed by Caverns, and then the Giant. But honestly, because it's tactics, you can honestly go to whichever of the three bosses because it's just too powerful. Okay, finally, we have the endgame. The endgame is probably the easiest choice out of these four choices. So your next two choices after the second boss are IP Castle and Distillery. If you fought the giant, you can skip these biomes altogether. Both IP Castle as well as Distillery have the same tier of shops, the same amount of scrolls and scroll fragments. They're technically the same difficulty, and both of them lead to Hand of the King. So I think this choice should depend on your build. I think you should default to IP Castle if you like don't 
have access to fast burst damage because in the derelict distillery, you have to deal with living barrels. They explode after a couple of seconds just like kamikaze bats and they're extremely annoying to deal with. So you need to have access to fast burst damage or you need to have access to like freezing or rooting to like keep them in place as you like get out of the way safely. If you have trouble with going through derelict distillery for the first couple of times, you can pick the masochist mutation so you don't get hit as much when you get hit by a trap because the barrels actually count as trap damage. Now this might be like an unpopular opinion, but I actually prefer distillery over high peak castle. There are some like trap puzzles here and there and you have to like get the key which is like again you have to go through like trap puzzles but honestly I don't think it's that bad once you get used to it like if you have the right build I would say derelict distillery is actually easier than hypey castle and finally if you fought the giant you get the option to skip these two biomes altogether now you might be asking well why would I want to like actually go through them when I can just skip them well first of all if you still need some upgrades beforehand the king fight if you think one of your items is still like bottom tier and you would like for it to be improved then you can try to go to the shops here to try your luck however i would say the main reason why you will want to go to these biomes instead of skipping them is because of scroll fragments on 3 bc plus now both of these two biomes give you two scroll fragments each but if you fought the giant and now you have two scroll fragments in your inventory you can go to these biomes to finish them off obviously if you have one scroll fragment at the end of the giant fight you probably shouldn't do it because you can't get enough to get a scroll stat anyways and finally both of these biomes lead to hand of the king now obviously this isn't a boss guide so I'm not going to talk about Hand of the King. But finally there we have it. Here is my biome guide for version 2.1 of Dead Cells. So hopefully you have learned something in terms of like build choice, which biomes to go through which, and how to like optimize your runs according to which build that you're using. This took a really long time to make and this was, and this was probably my most edited video of all time on this channel. So if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like. That's how the YouTube algorithm pushes it out to more people. So if you want more people to see this video, that's what you need to do. And finally, I post Dead Cells content, so guides just like this one, as well as 5 BC runs. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, make sure to subscribe to the channel. This has been it for me today with a biome guide. So hopefully you have enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.